Stand by for Bruce. Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden, and Can I Play With Madness? Iron Maiden, of course. Bruce Dickinson is the front man of one of the biggest bands in the world, Iron Maiden. But aside from that, he's also a pilot, an airline captain, aviation entrepreneur, beer brewer, motivational speaker, film script writer, best-selling author, radio presenter, TV actor, commentator, and international fencer. Not stolen goods, fencer, you know, like fence, fencing. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to go on a short tour, but not with the band. This time, he'll be entering entertaining with a wealth of stories and tales in his series of dates in an evening with Bruce Dickinson. And Bruce is on the line right now on Zoom right now. Hey, Bruce, good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. You, you, uh, I'm a rubbish coffee maker, though. Been a rock, so I don't get out of my coffin until, you know, at least sort of like half past 11, <laughs> yeah. you know. So. <laughs> well, you know, considering your lifestyle, you're remarkably energetic, fit, obviously good-looking. How have you managed to do that? You know, a lifetime of... Are you trying to ask me out on a date? Is that what... Yeah, yeah. Where should we go? I mean... You can drive. <laughs> I've given up my car completely. you still got the plane, though, haven't you? Yeah. No, like all good things in life, if it flies, floats, or something else, I can't remember, rent it. Bizarrely enough, there are places where you can go and rent an airliner. Now, what about this short tour that you're going on? It's not with the band you'll be entertaining with some stories. Yeah. I understand the show's going to be in two parts, so talk us through the two parts, Bruce. It all started out years ago when I did this biography, What Does This Button Do? And they said, well, let's go on a short tour doing readings from the book. And I went, well, that's a bit boring, really, isn't it? Why would anybody just turn up? They could read a book themselves. So I sort of enhanced it with a few ripe stories, and it went down very well. And then I added to it with a bit of basically like improv. So the last 45 minutes is based on something that I saw Quentin Crisp, of all people. You know, remember him? Yeah, of course, yeah. All that yeah. Stuff, right? When I was uh, at uni, my then girlfriend took me to see an evening with Quentin Crisp. So I went along. He was incredibly witty, fantastically entertaining. The last half of the show, though, was him coming out and riffing off of cue cards that the audience had written for him. And I always remembered it. So I thought, I wonder if I could do something similar. Effectively, when the people show up, they'll all be given cue cards, scribble down what you like, insults, maybe the pet dog, whatever it is. I take them backstage during the interval and very rapidly turn that into some kind of script. What do they ask about, Bruce? Do they ask about uh, the band? Do they ask about your private life? They can ask about anything. I mean, some of them ask about the band. You know, you get unwitting ones where people say, it was fantastic. Somebody wrote a cue card said, do you remember meeting my mum in a hotel in Budapest in 1983? And now my brain's really racing. And then at the bottom, we put, by the way, you're not my dad, I checked. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So Let's... When you get stuff like that, it's sort of comedy gold, really. I and mean, it's quite a straightforward question, but it's how you glue it together. I do take the mickey 
out of largely myself. I have been guilty of wearing, unrepentantly, I should add, some of the most ridiculous trousers in the world. Yes, but it's um, all in keeping with the, the imagery, well, isn't it? Well, and it all makes good sense, and it's all in the best possible taste, of course. Of course. <laughs> and there's a reason why I'm not invited to Paris Fashion Week. You know, but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you get a flavour of what the show is like. I mm-hmm. used some pictures because I can't spell. I got riff off the pictures for the first half of the show, which is about an hour and a half long. You had a couple of injuries. You had an Achilles tendon problem and, and then you've had a hip replacement, haven't you? I have, in fact, got five and a half inches of titanium hammered into my femur, which is uh, mm-hmm. a new hip, along with Andy Murray. Apparently it's been resurfaced, so it's just like the road menders have been in and just sort of like dug it up and put a new cable in. <laughs> Let me just do some dates for you, if I may, Bruce. An yeah. evening with Bruce Dickinson tour. It's in August this year, August 2021. Uh, on the 1st of August, it's Brighton at the Theatre Royal. And then it's Salford, the Lowry on the 4th. Bradford, the 5th, St George's Hall. 8th, Nottingham Theatre Royal. 9th, Birmingham, the Alexandra Theatre. And then on the 10th is London at the O2 Shepherd's Bush Empire. Wow. And then we've got the Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast UK dates 2022. So that's next year, June 2022. 11th, Donington Park, Download Festival. And on the 13th, Belfast Belsonic Festival. So that's what we've got so far. No doubt there'll be some stuff added to that. There's some brilliant stuff going on in Europe as well. I mean, we're playing to the fat end of a million people over the summer. Well, it's great to talk to you again. Tickets are on sale now for an evening with Bruce Dickinson. As I say, uh, begins in Brighton, August 1st. And you can catch him with Iron Maiden at Download Festival at Donington Park and at Bell Sonic Festival in Belfast, both in June next year. Uh, stay safe and thanks ever so much for being on and good luck. Keep us informed. I'll keep you on tenderhook, Steve. Thank you very much, Bruce. See you later. Bye. Thank you very much, Bruce Dickinson. Right in the afternoon. Yeah. BBC. Hey. Radio.